Hi, I'm Matt Walker. Welcome to you Kids Church. No, you're, you're Gray Walker. Hi, I'm Matt Walker. Welcome to Kids Church. We are so excited that you're with us. Maybe if you're like my family, you're in your pajamas right now. Maybe you're having some pancakes. We're so stoked that you're with us. Before we get going, we're going to play a game together. Hey guys, so welcome back to game time. So we have a fun game for you. I don't know if some of you guys were here at Kids XP a couple of years ago, but I got to smash some fruit with a hammer and it was so much fun. And I found a video where they're doing that as well. So let's watch. Fruit facts. One, fruit is good for you. Very true. Two, fruit tastes great. Very true as well. Three, pineapple is neither a pine nor an apple. Hmm, didn't know that. Four, fruit is fun to eat. Yes. Oh yeah, it's also fun to smash. I can also attest to that. It is very fun to smash. Who wants to see some fruit getting smashed? I know I do. What about you guys? Stand up, choose your fruit. If your fruit gets smashed, sit down because you are out. Ooh, okay, so you can play against your siblings if you're alone watching, totally fine. All right, cheer if you choose the pineapple. Who wants watermelon? And who picks the cantaloupe? I'm gonna go with pineapple because pineapple's delicious. It's, oh, watermelon just got smashed. Wow, isn't that cool? I just love, I love watching slow motion videos and I love that it's slow motion exploded. Okay, so watermelon, pineapple or cantaloupe, which one do you think is going to get smashed? I'm going to guess this time the cantaloupe is gonna get smashed and I really hope all of the seeds go exploding everywhere because, oh, it did it. I wasn't even watching and it did it. I'm so smart, great job me, so amazing. Man, that is messy. Okay, so we have watermelon. The middle looks like maybe an orange. Grapefruit, because it's a bigger orange. That's how I think of them. And then we have pineapple. Which one do you think is going to get smashed? I'm gonna go grapefruit. Oh, it was the watermelon. But look at the watermelon. I love when watermelon explodes. It kind of looks like sand because it has all of the little grainy bits and it just goes everywhere. Okay, grapefruit. We got pineapple and we have cantaloupe. We haven't seen the grapefruit explode yet, so I think grapefruit. I'm going for it. Grapefruit it is. Let's see. Oh, it's the pineapple. Man, who just wants to eat that right now? I don't either, it looks dirty and gross. That was so much fun. Thank you so much for playing, my friends. Uh, I had a great time, hope you guys did as well. Let's continue on with the rest of our show. Hi guys, I am so glad you're here today. All right, I have a few things for you to find. Are you ready? You need to find your Bible and a pen and paper. We're gonna use these items later. I'm gonna give you two minutes to go do it, okay? I'll see you in just a minute.
I think it's time for a little humor. And who doesn't love a good joke? I love a good joke. But you know what's better than a good joke? A bad joke. And you know what's better than a bad joke? A dad joke. So let's take it away to John for some bad dad jokes. Hi, friends. You ready for some jokes? Good. I hope so. So you know what the loudest pet you can get is? A trumpet. <laughs> So what do you call a fish with two knees? A toonie fish. <laughs> and why couldn't the bicycle stand up all by itself? Because it was too tired. Okay, that's all, folks. Hey, guys, it's time for Kids Creations. This is the part of our show where we share some of the fun things that you guys have been doing at home. We love seeing the things that you guys are creating, but we want to see more. So if you have a fun creation you want to share, email them to kids at fcchb.com. Okay, so our first one is Ryan. And Ryan colored these two papers that say God loves Ryan. Ryan, I love that you use blue. I love the color blue. Next, Shelby did a painting of a beach. I love that Shelby added a palm tree right in the middle of the sand. It looks just like a real beach. And last, we have a video from my friend Xander. This is Bob, and I made him out of candy. Xander filmed a video of him playing hockey, and he even made a goalie named Bob out of cans. I think Bob should have worn a helmet. If you want to share your creations with us, send them to kids at fccchb.com. I am so excited. This month, our theme is I Spy. Our song this month is called I Spy. Sometimes it's difficult when you have a bad day to see where Jesus is. This song reminds us that he is all around us. Are you ready to celebrate? I know I am. Here we go. He's the best 
I love celebrating Jesus, and one of the ways I like doing that is by singing and dancing. This next song is called Trusting in You. God is always with us. He never leaves us. Sometimes we have great days, sometimes we have bad days, but we can trust that He is always there. Are you ready to celebrate? Get up on your feet. Here we go. When I need help, God, you are my helper. And when I am scared, God, you make me braver. So I know just what to do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, I know just what to do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I keep on trusting. Trusting. Trusting in. God, you are my helper, and when I am scared, God, you make me braver, so I know just what to do, yes I do, yes I do, oh I know just what to do, yes I do, yes I do, I keep on trusting, trusting in you. Check this out. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing a story that used to be kind of embarrassing for me to tell, but now I found it's kids' favorite story to hear. I shared it once in the beach house, and so if you're a beach house friend, you'll recognize this story. So, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this place called Not Scary Farm. So it's Not Scary Farm, the really fun amusement park, but it's all scary. And at night, they have these monsters and this, and this scary stuff. They're all, it's all pretend. It's all these actors who pretend to be scary, but it feels pretty scary in the moment. So one of my friends was having a birthday and she invited me to come along. I thought, hey, it can't be that bad. So I went. I don't like being scared. And I really think that helped emphasize that point when I was there. So we were going, I was having an okay time, getting really scared, but it was pretty okay until we went to this special maze. They have these mazes and this was a special maze because we had to sign these documents because they could, they could grab us and they had us eat like mealworms at one point. It was really, really wild. But there was one part of the maze that really got to me. See, my friend whose birthday it was, she was having a grand old time. She was loving every second of it and she was, you know, having a great time for her birthday. And I knew that I was okay because she was, she was doing fine. And if anything got really bad, there was a safe word that would stop the maze. It was called boysenberry. So if I said boysenberry, everything would stop. And I knew it was okay because it wasn't real. It was just these actors, people who were just kind of trying to have fun. So we go into this room and I'm a little scared and it's very dark and there's just one person in the room and he's not talking, which makes me nervous because I love talking and hearing someone not talk is very strange to me. So I see the guy and he looks at my friend and he points to her. 
and then he points to this box. He wanted my friend to go into the box. Then I go, first off, no, because I need her for moral support. I'm gonna get really freaked out if she's not here. Two, where are you gonna take her? That box doesn't lead to anything. So they take her and I hear her scream. And that's when I lost it. My friends, when I tell you I sobbed, I sobbed like a three-year-old who just lost their candy. It was horrible. I have this bright red face. I'm like, <laughs> the man who was in the room took that opportunity to then point to me. And I go, who, moi? And he goes, yes, you. And he points to another box. And I say, no. I can't. But what's really crazy about me is I'm a rule follower, pretty to the letter. So as I'm saying no, I'm walking over and getting into the box very slowly. And I'm saying, please don't make me, please don't make me as I lower the top and start crying more. And then I'm sitting in there and I knew my friend had screamed when she went into a box. So I was like, okay, something's gonna happen to me. And then I feel these hands grab me. What? I lose it. I'm kicking, I'm screaming, I'm like, they've got me, I'm gonna, ah! And then I hear on the other side, she's not coming with me. What was supposed to happen was he was supposed to pull me through and everything was gonna be fine. But I resisted too much, so he just kind of gave up. So then nothing happened, I'm sitting in the box, and then I open the top back up. My friends, the other friends who were with us, completely gone. And I look at the guy and I go, where are my friends? And he goes, you have to get back in the box. And I said, no, we already played this game. I'm not getting back in there. He goes, you have to get back in the box. I go, no, where did my friends go? So he let me get out and he let me to the same spot where my friends were. I saw them and I was so excited. I grabbed onto them and I just started crying some more. And then right after that moment, they took this picture. Now you can see on this picture, my face is bright red because I went from sobbing to posing for a picture. I'm holding, my, I'm holding my jacket like this because I didn't trust it. They then scared us again after that and it was terrible and horrible and I'll never go back again. But in that moment, the entire time when I was in my box and when I was separated from my friends, I felt super alone. I wasn't alone. That guy who worked there was there. He wasn't actually gonna hurt me. He was just like making this scene. And also my friends were just in the other room. I wasn't alone but it felt like it, I was. And that's sometimes what it's like when we're with God. Sometimes we feel like we're alone and we have to face these scary things on our own, but it's not really true. God's always with us. Sometimes we have to look at this big picture and realize it, but sometimes we can only see that scary part. So we're gonna be talking a little bit more about this later on in our message, but super excited. But thanks for sharing, uh, uh, checking out our share and uh, check this out. We'll be back next week. See you guys. Hey everyone, it's me, Miss Kelly. And if you know me, you know I talk to owls and I like to keep things simple. So today I'm gonna to tell you the simplest form of the Bible story and then Miss Bonnie and Miss Allie are going to come on and dig a lot deeper and really get into it. Now all month we're talking about Jesus, God's son. He came to teach us how to love others and to be our friend forever. Jesus is alive and we can believe in him. But not everyone believes Jesus is alive. One of those people was a man named Saul. Saul grew up believing that you had to follow a lot of rules if you love God. I mean, a lot. Saul heard people saying that Jesus was teaching everyone a brand new rule. Not a lot of rules, just one rule. And Jesus' one rule was, love each other the way I love you. That's it. Because Jesus is God's son, they followed him and did what he said. This made Saul super angry. He wanted people to follow all the other rules. He didn't want people following Jesus. He even started being mean to people who followed Jesus. Do you know what that's called, Ollie? Mm-hmm. Persecution. Saul was persecuting people for believing in Jesus and following him. Then one day, he was on his way to persecute more people who followed Jesus and he saw a bright light, and someone started talking to him. Who do you think was talking to him, Ollie? Mm-hmm, it was Jesus. And Jesus asked Saul, why do you persecute me? Then after, he told him to go to a house and wait. Now after the bright light, Saul couldn't see anything, but he did what Jesus said, and someone helped him find the house. 
Some of Jesus' friends came to the house to help Saul. They helped Saul because Jesus had taught them the new rule. Love each other the way Jesus loves you. After a few days, he could see again. Do you think he believed in Jesus now? Absolutely. He was a changed man, and Jesus even gave him a new name. Do you remember what it is, Ollie? Paul. That's right. He gave him the name Paul. So angry Saul, who is mean to people, became happy Paul, who loved people and believed in Jesus. Everyone can believe in Jesus. And when we believe in Jesus, we love people the way that Jesus loves us. So tell me, Ollie, who can believe in Jesus? That's right. I can believe in Jesus, and so can you. Hi, I'm Miss Bonnie. I'm Miss Sally. And we miss you guys. Still miss you. We do still miss them. Yeah. But we're glad you're watching. So glad you're watching. We hope that you're having a great day. We do. Now, Miss Sally, I'm enjoying these holidays that you're looking up They're for. They're so much fun. I, Like I said, I love looking up fun holidays, especially now because I like having things to look forward to. And yes. this one is pretty special. Uh, so we are celebrating, uh, I think, let me, let me make sure I get this correct. It is... National Nursing Assistance Day. So we thought it would be fun to take some nurses that we know from this ministry area uh, and celebrate them and thank them for what they've done. I love this. So uh, first up, um, we have Kevin. Yes, Kevin Piscopo. So he is super amazing. He used to volunteer in the Lighthouse, and this is him right here. We are so thankful for Kevin. Uh, he actually lives in San Diego right now, but he is right now in his scrubs and face mask working and helping people. So thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. We appreciate that. The next one we have is Carlene. Mm -hmm. Now we have actually Carlene and her two children are in our ministry here at church, which we love. That's so much fun. And Miss Carlene on the weekend when we have services in the house, she's one of our nurses on our emergency team. So thank you so much, Carlene. We appreciate all that you do. Yes, thank you so much. And then we have my friend, Miss Kelly, different than our other Miss Kelly. This Miss Kelly, uh, has two daughters who volunteer in our area and she actually just started helping out to volunteer as well. So she works with kids and we are so thankful for Miss Kelly and all of the work she does. Thank you, Miss Kelly, we appreciate it. And then last but not least, we have Miss Cambria. So this is a, another nurse and she actually has two children also in our ministry area. She has one in the beach house and one in the tree tree house. And we are so thankful for yes. all the work that she does. Thank you so much. All of you who have been working, nurses and doctors and fire and police to keep us safe and keep us well during this difficult time, we appreciate you. We'd like to pray for you. Yes, we would. So if you guys would bow your heads with us, let's pray. So thank you, Lord, so much for these wonderful people who are dedicating their lives to helping others uh, during this crazy and unprecedented time. Lord, I pray that you bless all of the frontline workers, all of those who are essential and who are continuing to help us. Um, Lord, I pray, pray that you bless them in all of the work that they're doing and all of the others that we didn't get to acknowledge today. We love you and we love them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for doing that. Of course. Now, today we're going to talk about one of your favorite guys. I am so excited. So, Miss Kelly mentioned that we are talking about our friend Saul Paul. Wait, that you. So, okay. Long story short, I like to create little nicknames for people because it makes yes, she does. it makes more sense for me. Sometimes I get confused because if you read if you read the story of Paul, Saul Paul, You'll see Saul, then you'll see Paul, and then you're like, who are we talking about? So I just call him one name, Saul Paul. Helps me remember. And so, as you remember, Saul used to be kind of not so great of a guy. Well, it wasn't that he wasn't a great guy, it's just he wasn't doing great things. Right. He thought he was doing everything perfect. He actually, believe it or not, loved God mm -hmm. with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. He really thought he was doing the right thing. But Saul Paul wasn't someone who would just do something 50%, 90%. He did everything 110%. And so what he thought was his way of living was the correct way. When Jesus came, he said, no, that way is not correct. We only have to follow one rule. And this Kelly mentioned that. So before we jump further into Saul Paul, I have another package. Are you guys ready? Yes. 
I love getting, I have told you that I love getting packages. Um, we, through all of this pandemic and stuff, have ordered almost everything online. So we get boxes at our house almost, no we do, pretty much every day. So I ordered something, let's see if I can get the box open. Wow, it's stronger than I thought. I'm really impressed. We got some scissors just in case she can do it because I doubted her. No, I She's love it. She's proven me wrong. I love it. Okay, so this is to help us with our lesson today. And I don't know if you've seen this because I don't know how much you order from Amazon, but Amazon now has these little things that oh. you can cut out and color. Oh, I actually didn't on the more box. than a box. That is really cool. I actually how funny is that? that? Isn't that cool? So we did some in our house. It's a flower. You cut it apart, yeah. decorate it, and stand it up. Now, just a side note, if you order Amazon, make sure and check the edges, okay? Yeah. All so right. I definitely do that. So today I ordered smelly pens and sports stationery. That is so perfect. And it's perfect because when Saul Paul was doing all the kind of not so great things, right? He wasn't being a super nice people, right. person to Christians. So later on, he gets that bright light and it's Jesus talking to him saying, why are you persecuting me? And he goes and he completely changes his life around 180. He is now 110% for God. Like I said, or not for God, for Jesus. See, like we said, he's either 110% against or 110% for. He is now 110% for. And after he started being for Jesus, he would take letters and he would write all these yep. to all these churches to encourage them and to help them become better Christians, to follow Jesus better. You know, I think I'm going to take these and write some of our friends this week. Yeah, like that. Isn't that a fun idea? That I think I'll do fun. that. So I love that he wrote letters and I love that Paul loved God so much that he literally went from doing one thing to like this huge shift of yeah. being a totally different person. And so when he was following Jesus, he wrote the letters and shared everywhere he went. Yes. There was nothing that was gonna stop him. Yeah. So I wanna read in our Bible today something that Paul bragged about, okay? Mm -hmm. So Miss Allie, help us again how we find, we are actually gonna go to a book called Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Okay, perfect. So what we're gonna do, like I said, no shame, opening up to our table of contents. Great. Because sometimes it's hard to find things. So I go into my Old Testament. We know we're talking about Jesus, so we know we're not going in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go into the New Testament. Right. So we're gonna go ahead until we see Second Corinthians. So it's gonna be a two and then Corinthians. So we go Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians. I see that, I go over, I see what page number I go to. Your page number will be different than mine, that's why I'm not giving you the page number. So I am back in there, and I am going to look for 2 Corinthians 11. So that's the big 11. I went a little too far. So 2 Corinthians, so 2 Corinthians 11. So it's gonna look like this. There's gonna be a big 11. I don't know if you can see it, but there'll be a big 11. And then we wanna go into small numbers. Those are our verses. If you need to pause us at this point, go ahead and pause us, and find 2 Corinthians 11, and then start again, yep. okay? No shame in taking taking their time to yeah, find it. Yeah, of course. Okay? Like I said, it took me forever. I can only open this fast now because I do it for a living. Right. Sometimes, some weekends I'm doing it like seven times. So, so we're gonna go to 23. So 2 Corinthians 11, the little number of 23. So it okay. starts with are they. Okay, so this is great because this is Paul talking, or I'm so sorry, Saul Paul Thank talking. Thank you for correcting me. So I, I tried to correct myself there. Um, are, they of, are they servants of Christ? I am more. I have worked much harder. Oh, you know what I need to tell you here? What? Is this is, you're gonna have to really listen because he is telling us some of the things that happened to him after he started following Jesus. Yes, because we know that it's not always rainbows and unicorns and sunshine. Right. It's sometimes there are difficult days when you follow Jesus. Yes. So Paul starts out and he's telling us what he went through. So let's see what his day was like. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna count it because okay, there's good. gonna be a lot. I'm gonna put this right here so it stays open. Okay, you ready? I'm following along. It says, uh, I am much more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. 
I have been continually on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, Ugh. in danger in the sea, in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger. I have been thirsty. I have often gone without food. I have been cold and I have been naked. Besides everything else, wow, that's crazy. That's a lot. Yeah. So I would have probably stopped definitely after the first one. The being in prison? Yeah. And I, so many things happened. I didn't even have enough fingers and even toes to count it. But that was absolutely wild. And what I love is after all of that, Miss Monty started it, but I want to, I want to continue it on. Oh, I stopped. So, what does it say? So it says, sorry, I have to make sure I find it. It says, besides everything else, I face daily, daily the pressure of my concern for all churches. So during this time, he doesn't think well with me. He doesn't, he doesn't focus on that. He goes, I constantly think about the well-being of the other churches. Remember, he started all these churches and what he did was wrote all these letters to encourage them and to help them become better. He focused on his mission, which was to tell people about who Jesus was. <laughs> that is easier said than done. 110%. Because when I'm having a bad day or I can't go to a certain restaurant to eat or I can't see my friends, I am telling you, it is hard for me to stop and remember to care about the other person around me. But Paul did that. In the midst of being naked, having no food, he stopped and he told people about Jesus. Yeah. He was shipwrecked. That means that like his ship stopped working. He was just in the middle of the ocean. That day. And it even said he was he was in the water overnight, a day and a night, like floating in the water. I mean, but still he chose in the midst of all of this to write letters mm -hmm. and tell people how much Jesus loved them. It's crazy. I just I I absolutely love it. And so I, I have a question for you. Okay. <laughs> Through God's strength, how can I help others even when my day's not going so great? Because Paul Saul Paul was working so hard on trying to help other people. Even though his day wasn't going so great, he still works to help other people. But how, how can I help other people during that time? So I think if we go one more page over, mm -hmm. we find the answer because Saul Paul is a wise man. Yes, I mean, he, he writes so much that I so appreciate all the time. So if we go, in my Bible, it's one page over. It's 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Now this is the end of this book. And it is the final greeting that Paul gives the person who he's writing this letter to. Remember, this is a letter. Yeah. I love that. This was a letter written thousands of years ago. This is what he says. Finally, brothers and sisters, that's the people he's writing to. He says, finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. So I like to sometimes take things like this and break it down because there are some big Great words idea. in there Great and sometimes idea. I, I really hate when I skim through something and I don't fully understand it because okay. it's really important. I, I think that's a great idea. So he starts out and he says, finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. So he's telling all of his all of the people that he's writing to rejoice. So rejoice just means be joyful again. So is that different than happiness? And yes. if so, how? So we have joy and happiness, right? Sometimes we use them at, at the same time, but they're different. So happiness would be like me going up to Miss Bonnie and saying, Miss Bonnie, here's a million dollars. That would make me happy. She's happy, right? And I then would be happy. I go up to Miss Bonnie and say, actually, I need a million dollars back and I take it back. From I would not be happy. So happiness depends on your situation. Mm -hmm. When things okay. go your way, you're like, sweet, everything's great. When things don't go your way, you're not happy anymore. When I have joy, that means I can find happiness in any circumstance. So just like Paul Saul did. Yeah. He, he was in the middle of the ocean. He, everybody attacked, everybody hated him and attacked him. And yet he still was able to be happy and to have joy and peace. And I, I just, it, it overwhelms me when I think about it. Honestly. Yeah, it, it, it's, it is definitely crazy. So then he goes on to say, he says, strive for full restoration. So when I think of the word restoration, I think about furniture. So my mom really loves taking me to thrift stores. And I say it like that because my mom loves taking me and 
I don't love going. Most sort of the of time, like you don't love vegetables. Huh? Yes, exactly. So I come kick, kicking and screaming. She's like dragging me. There's plenty of times I've just sat in the car while my mom has looked for hours upon hours in a thrift store. I'm scarred by it. <laughs> Anyways, so when we have this old furniture, sometimes we have to do what's called restore it. We have mm -hmm. to we have to fix it up and we have to make it like new again. And so what it's saying is when we when we when we follow Jesus, we can become like new again. Mm -hmm. That we can we can go back. Sometimes we can go back to some of our old ways, but we become like this new creation. And that's what it means for a full restoration. So that's probably nothing that I do to restore myself. That's something Jesus does to me. Yeah, Jesus okay. helps transform that's, us that's great. into these people. Okay, so rejoice, restore, and then it goes on to say encourage one another. That's you're doing a great job, Miss Bonnie. Thank you, Miss Allie. I really love that purple on you. You Thank look lovely. You. See, that's encouraging. Telling mm -hmm. someone they're doing a great job, helping them want to continue on. It's a good job. Mm -hmm. uh, be of one mind, live in peace. So this one, when I first read it, I thought we all had to think the same. Mm -hmm. It meant that we all have to have the same opinions, we have to have the same thoughts. But when I think about it a little bit more, it's okay that Miss Bonnie loves vegetables. I do I love don't. vegetables. It's okay that I choose to be able to eat meat and she chooses not to eat any animal products. Those things are okay. We don't have to have the same mind in that. But the same mind that we have, the thing that keeps us together, that keeps us friends, is the fact that we both believe that Jesus was the Messiah, the person that was promised, who was the Son of God. And that's the important part. Yeah. It's okay to have different opinions, different philosophies, but having that foundation of knowing that Jesus is the Messiah and is our Savior is the key. Yeah, and that's how okay. we do life one. Now life this life. verse, this to me is the most important part. Because Let's this it. is the part. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. And the God of love and peace will be with you. So that means that God isn't this God who's supposed to be scary and I mean, sometimes we're afraid of God. We're like, oh, God sees all of the things that I've done that's bad. But it doesn't say that he's this angry and vindictive person. It says that he is of love and peace because he loves you. And that brings us peace and joy and harmony. And isn't that just so spectacular? I love it because I always think about him being on my side. <laughs> he's not on the other side yelling at me. He's right beside me. Whatever I'm walking through, whatever I'm dealing with, He's right here beside me, guiding me. And that part makes me happy. And so I just want to encourage you guys to think about how we can live like this, mm -hmm. how we can rejoice, how we can be restored, how we can be of like mind, and how we can be with God. So the challenge then, or the question is, how can we be like Paul and put others first? Yeah. Share with them the love of Jesus Yeah. this week. It, it's a tough question, but I think you guys can definitely do it. And if you guys have any ideas or thoughts or want to share with us, please email us. We have a great email. We love hearing from you guys. You. Uh, so it's kids, K-I-D-S, at F-C-C-H-B.com. Uh, email us. Let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining us today, friends. I'm going to pray if that's okay, Miss Alex. Let's do it. Okay. Dear Lord, thank you so much for Saul Paul. Thank you that he wrote down words that we can now read and know who and what you like. Thank you for my friends, Lord. I pray that you would be with them this week. I pray that you would be so close to them that they would know that you are there. We love you so much and we thank you for this. I thank you for Miss Allie and for our church. We love you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks friends for joining us. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks for joining us for Kids Church today. Learning about Jesus and the Bible is awesome. But Jesus wants us to go a step further. Instead of learning and leaving it, Jesus tells us that when we learn from him, we're to put it into practice. We're to do something with it. It's kind of like a seed. Seeds are filled with all kinds of potential for growth and beauty. But if you don't plant it, it'll never grow. Let's make sure the seeds of learning that we get from the Bible are planted and we can let the amazing garden of God's love grow. To help you along, I have a big challenge for you. Your challenge is to become an epic encourager. It means that you will look around your family this week and see if someone's stressed out or sad. 
Once you find someone who is stressed out or sad, it's time to take action. Maybe your dad is sad because he can't hang out with his friends anymore. Well, write him a note and let him know how much you appreciate him hanging out with you. Maybe your mom is sad because she can't go into work anymore. Then write her a letter and let her know how important she is. Maybe your sister cannot have a birthday party with all the friends. Then make a card for her and remind her how much she is loved by Jesus. Writing down encouragements is a great way for others to see the great things that God has done in their lives. Now, remember earlier, we had you grab a pen and a piece of paper. Grab that right now and start writing some encouraging things to the people today. That's our challenge this week. I hope you do it with me. I would love to hear how your challenge goes. Feel free to reach out to us at kids at FCCHB.com. Thanks for joining us. See you next week.